Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Or original. This guy's channel is so good. Uh, Ryan Shirley, we're doing France this time, guys. Top 25 places to visit. You know, the, the top 10, top 25 travel, you know, tips, you know, is fun about the channel, but the photography images are insane. And they're always insane. They're so good. So we're doing France this time. Original link to the video, top of the description. Below that link to the Discord. Click on it, send it right over there. If you haven't seen the video from the original channel, try and go see that first. Okay, guys? Give them the view. Let's go. What's up, guys? My name is Ryan, and I recently turned from traveling around France, and I want to share with you my favorite places. So here's my France. Jesus Christ, 25. look at that! I've... This is not the first time I've seen this, but oh my god. After visiting France, it's easy to see why it's the most visited country in the world. It's home to endless history, enchanting towns, from the towering Alps to the cheek French Riviera, France is waiting to be experienced. Let's start this video off at Etretat, located about a three hours drive from Paris. This Lahar, was the I... first place I went to when I got to France. The main reason I wanted to come here was to witness the impressive sea cliffs. When we reached- We were that close and we didn't go. We were trying to get to Normandy to go to, go to uh, Omaha Beach. Great uncle died there in World War II. But we stopped in La Havre just because we had to stop somewhere to sleep. And this was that close and we didn't go. About a three hours drive from Paris, this was the first place I went to when I got to France. The main reason I wanted to come here was to witness the impressive sea cliffs. When we reached... Guys, look at like the layer. I'm pausing to... Uh, to Look at like the layer striation of, uh, I can't. I wanted to come here was to witness the impressive sea cliffs. When we reached Etretat, we walked through the beautiful coastal town and arrived at the beach. It had this nice pebble stone sand and you could get a view of the cliffs. I mean, they were freaking huge, a lot bigger than I expected. Now, after we decided to walk on top of the cliffs, we strolled along the beautiful boardwalk and made it to the top. My favorite features of the cliffs are the sea arches. There are three of them. And I also like the pointed sea stack called- I want to pause so bad guys but bit, i can't sea fog started to roll in and gave the area such a different feel I mean, it was just so much fun being on top of those cliffs if you can i recommend staying until sunset the sun will hit the cliffs perfectly lighting them up with the orange glow afterwards we're going to visit the island of corsica located right above the island of sardinia corsica is this massive island full of so many diverse landscapes it's home to jagged mountains and some of france's best coastline now one of my favorite spots on the island is bonafide Fascio. It's this medieval town built upon these oh, yeah, uh, France for such a small country well compared to other European countries they're not small. They're one of the bigger countries in Europe. Okay, I know that. But for its size I, I feel like there's so much uh, geographical, environmental freaking fly uh changes like you have the alps crazy high mountains when you know the the crazy mountain ranges in the world um you, you know it touches the mediterranean it touches bay of biscay right is that the atlantic it touches the english channel it it just you you could ski there you can just there's so much culture and great museums yeah Limestone cliffs. It's nicknamed the Mediterranean Sentinel. Now it's located right in the most southern point in the island. Nearby, there are some more incredible white cliffs with crystal clear waters. Another one of my favorite spots in Corsica is the Klang Stipiana. 4K. Sorry. There are these sharp red cliffs that dive into the sea. They have such a distinct color, and there's a windy road that drives right through them. There's also some incredible beaches in the area, such as Plog de Busaglia. Afterwards, we're going to visit the French Alps. Now, this is easily one of my favorite regions in all of France. It's home to the incredibly massive... Look at how sharp the Alps is, you know? That, that means it's kind of a more new... Is the Alps a more recent mountain range? Like, I know the Appalachians are super old, and so they're all, like, s smoothed over. Is it, 
Now this is maybe I'm full of crap. My favorite regions in all of France. It's home to the incredibly massive Mont Blanc, which is the highest mountain. In I'm gonna all sit the on my hands so I don't pause. 1,807 meters. Mont Blanc doesn't have the most prominent peak compared to other mountains, but just hard to comprehend how huge this mountain is. Now the town located at the base of Mont Blanc is Chamonix. It's a hub for some of Europe's best skiing and hikes. I really enjoyed walking around the town. It reminded me of a French Zermatt. Now one thing you gotta do while you're there is take the gondola to Le Aiguille du Midi. Now to get there, you can take a 20 minute cable car ride, which holds the road record for the highest vertical ascent by a cable car with an altitude gain of over 2,807 meters. Um, it costs about 69 euros for a round trip ticket to the top. Now while I was there, it was extremely packed. I think there was like some holiday going on. So just plan accordingly. You'll take two lifts up. I mean, just wild how steep it is. This kind of reminds me of Innsbruck, Austria, it wasn't as cool of a view as this, but it was pretty cool. You felt like you were in like a, a bowl around a bunch of mountains. It didn't have as, it, it didn't look this cool, but it was cool. So just plan accordingly. You'll take two lifts up. I mean, just wild how steep it is. Now, when you reach the top, you'll be at an elevation of 3,843 meters. You can definitely feel the shortness of oxygen in your lungs. When you get off the lift, you'll walk through this labyrinth of tunnels carved straight out of the granite. There's tons of walkways and platforms to explore. You'll get an excellent view of Mont Blanc and the other mountains. Now, one thing I thought was crazy is that there's a place where the mountaineers exit to either go hike to Mont Blanc or just explore. Explore the glacier. That's cool. Like we do indeed was such an incredible experience and definitely the highlight of our time in the French Alps. Now, when you get back to Chamonix, another thing you can do is take the train to Mer de Glace. Guys, so I, I feel like it looks more steep from this point of view than probably when you're on it. But like, if you fell right there, I mean, in order for anyone to answer this question, I guess you'd have to be, you'd have to have been there. But like, dude, would you just like slide to your death or, or okay? Sorry. Okay. Oops. Now, when you get back to Chamonix, another thing you can do is take the train to Mer de Glass. You can get a Mont Blanc multi-pass for about 83 euros. This will both let you take the train and the lift to Le Aiguille du Midi. Now, the train winds up the mountain and you get some great views along the way. Sit on the left-hand side to get the best views. Now, when you reach the top, you'll be able to see the Mer de Glass. It's the second largest glacier in glacier. all of Europe. I mean, what's sad is when you look at pictures of over 150 years ago and you see how much the this glacier has shrank. Regardless, the whole area is breathtaking. You'll get views of the surrounding mountains. They're just like so guys, so when it when so did the glacier cause this or did the water going under the glacier cause this? Because it's not like a glacier is dragged upward. It, it I don't know. Just if anyone does know. Regardless, the whole area is breathtaking. You'll get views of the surrounding mountains. They're just like so jagged. I've never seen anything like them. There's also a restaurant and hotel up top. Afterwards, we're going to visit the nearby city of Anzi. Now, located at the foot of the Alps, about an hour's drive from Chamonix, this alpine town is famous for its canals, hence it's called the Venice of the Alps. Now, the city is... That looks like straight out of a Disney movie. It's crazy. Famous for its canals, hence it's called the Venice of the Alps. Now the city is just absolutely magical, but what I love about the region is the Lake Anzi. It's surrounded by scenic mountains, and it's known as one of the cleanest lakes in all of Europe. I mean, I can't think of a better place to enjoy on a hot summer day. One of the crowning features of the area is the Chateau de Menthon Saint. Bernard. The first fortress was built here around 1,000 years ago, and today it stands as one of the most impressive castles in all the Alps. We decided to explore stuff like this that makes me so happy. None of this stuff was bombed or destroyed in World War One or World War Two, but it also makes me think about all the stuff that probably was destroyed. I'd like to see a video if anyone of like what kind of like super old structures were lost through the World Wars, because there had to have been some, and it's probably pretty sad. I'm glad stuff like this survived. I mean, it's in the Alps. It's not like it'd be a very big target for Allied bombing. So 
It cost about 11 euros to enter. I was just astonished by the size of it and how well the castle was preserved. There was a massive courtyard with perfectly laid stones. The chateau's interior was just as impressive. It's just wild to think people lived in such luxury hundreds of years ago. I mean, I can't imagine what it must have been like to live there back then. After the Alps, we're gonna head over to the Alsace region. Now located in Eastern France, bordering Germany and Switzerland, the Alsace region is famous for its fairy tale cities, wine country, and rich history. Over the centuries, the region has alternated between French and German control, and today it represents a mix of those cultures. The capital of Alsace is Strasbourg. It's home to the formal seat of the European Parliament. Another Guys, as much as I love 4K, it is slightly slowing down like the video a bit, so I'm going to sacrifice to the top HD. Channing City in the it's home to the formal seat of the European Parliament. Another Not enchanting city in the region is Colmar. If you want to escape the cities, you can experience the Alsace wine route. It's a 170 kilometer long route that passes through some of France's greatest wine countries. Yeah, I, this looks familiar. I'm not saying I've been here, but my dad and... Look, obviously I don't have a lot of experience. Right, I'm, I'm not like the biggest traveler who can tell you all this stuff. So I have, I have limited experience, okay? But I do remember going through this type of area when going from traveling back towards London, Heathrow, to fly back, but going through Switzerland and then France. And I really wanted to see the Maginot Line, which I, we did see a sketchy story it, for next time. And then driven through area that looked just like this on our way back towards Paris, like from Switzerland to Paris. And it looked just like this. And amazing country and picturesque towns. One of my favorites is the quaint village of Ricavier. It's believed to be the village that inspired the town from Beauty and the Beast. Even if you don't drink wine like me, it's impossible to not fall in love with this region of France. After, we're going to France's capital of Paris. I want to learn how to Since the 17th do a century, standing. Paris has been Europe's major center of finance. Paris. Now, since. Yeah. I remember, you know, there's like a food court kind of area up here, and then you can take stairs to up here. But then in order to go to the tip top, you got to get on a uh, elevator, and the line was way too long. The 17th century, Paris has been Europe's major center of finance, diplomacy, fashion, and the arts. Paris is one of the world's most visited cities, and with all its attractions and fascinating history, it's easy to see why. Paris's most recognizable attraction is the Eiffel Tower. I've learned so much about Napoleon since being there, and the I want to go back. There. The Eiffel Tower is 320. Can you see Napoleon's uh, sar sarcophagus or uh, tomb area? Four meter high, which made it the tallest man made structure in the world till 1930. Another popular attraction is the Louvre Museum. It's the world's largest art museum and it's home to Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. You can also take a drive around the Arc de Triomphe or walk the grounds of the Palace of Versailles. And there's just so much to see in this grand city. Now, after it, we're going to visit the Loire Valley. Now, look in. Is that the uh, Louis XIV? whatever palace of versailles Central france about a two hours drive from paris this has to be the chateau capital of the world it's home to over 300 french castles now if you're wondering why there are so many chateaus here it's because of the combination of location fertile grounds and the competition amongst kings that's Versailles, right? And royals that brought so many castles here. One of the most famous chateaus is Chambord. It's the largest in the valley, and it's as stately as big as Paris. It's rumored that Leonardo da Vinci helped design it. It took over 28 years to build and was finished in 1547. Now, from above, you can see it's perfectly square moat. Am I sounding like an idiot? Like, is this not what... That was built to protect the castle and it's truly a mind-blowing piece of architecture now another one of my favorites is the chateau de chunansu built in the early 16th century what's why i might have been completely wrong there guys i, I don't know but i just guess one of my I... favorites is the chateau de chunansu built in the early 16th century what's wild about this chateau is it's built upon a river i mean i love all the arches it's definitely one of the most beautiful buildings in all of france after we're going to head down to southern france to the french riviera 
Riviera, now located on the southeast corner of France. I have to say that the French Riviera is home to some of the world's best coastline. One stunning city on the French Riviera is Monton. It's strikingly beautiful with its colorful buildings complemented with a backdrop of the Maritime Alps. We stayed several days here and I really enjoyed just walking around the city. Monton was a part of Italy until 1860 when it and the rest of Nice County was added to France. There's a great boardwalk that walks along the coast and I really enjoyed going out to the Lighthouse Pier to get panoramic views of Menton. Now afterwards we're going to visit the medieval town of Ez. Now located on a hilltop tower looking over the French Riviera. I have to say this was easily the coolest medieval place I visited in my time in southern France. It was only a short 30 minute drive from Menton. Now Ez was founded during the Middle Ages around the 14th century and today it is known worldwide for its medieval vibe and views of the French Riviera. When we were there we parked in a parking lot at the base of Ez and then walked up the winding stairs and cobblestone paths through the village. I mean, you really feel like you're walking back in time. Everything is so old, yet it's perfectly preserved, and the village is just full of like these tunnel walkways and trees that were just built around. It truly is such a cool place. Now, one of the main features of the village is the exotic Actus. garden. It's this beautiful place that sits on top of the village. It not only has beautiful plants and cactuses, but it offers one of the best cacti, actually. Sorry. Here's actually cacti. It not only has beautiful plants and cactuses, but it offers one of the best views of the French Riviera. It's definitely worth the hike and six euro entry fee. Now afterwards, we're gonna head over to Nice. Now as the capital of the Maritime Alps Department of France, Nice is the second largest city on the French Riviera Whoa. after Marseille. Now if you're flying to the French beautiful. Riviera, this is probably the best airport to come to. I didn't really spend any much time here. I didn't really feel like walking around the city, but I do regret not checking out. So if you're in the French Riviera, you definitely can give Nice a visit. Now another prominent nearby resort town is Cannes. Now it's located about 40 minutes drive from Nice. Cannes? Like many places along the French Riviera, Cannes is associated with the rich and famous and hosts the annual Cannes Film Festival. Now just outside of Cannes is some of the most beautiful coastline on the French Riviera. It's called the Esserel and it's these red rock cliffs that dive into the sea. Now I was talking to a local on the beach and he told me that this was his favorite place on the Riviera so I had to go check it out. Even the, the coastline coastlines look so the different. The Estoril Massif, and it stretches from Cannes to San Rafael. Now it's full of hidden coves, red rock islands, and secluded beaches. I love just driving. I wonder why the rock is so different looking, like it along the coastline and parking in its many lookout points and just exploring the coast i highly recommend visiting here now one really cool place i visited in the area is cap du Germain. now the reason i wanted to go here is because there's this little island with a medieval looking watchtower on it it was constructed in the 20th century and it's believed to be the inspiration behind the black island in the adventures of tintin now it just looks so scenic coupled with the red coastline i mean there's a really nice beach there and the water is perfect for free diving such an enjoyable place now afterwards we're going to visit the town of San Tropez Whoa, big now, this boat. is one of my favorite towns I visit on the French Riviera San Tropez is located about an hour and a half drive from Nice now San Tropez grew as a fishing village and military stronghold until the 20th century and it was the first town to be liberated on the French Riviera during World War II in the 1960s San Tropez started gaining popularity amongst jet setters and today it's renowned for its beaches nightlife and yachts now the main part of San Tropez is what? Today is renowned for its beaches, nightlife, and yachts. Huh? That looks a bit strange, huh? It's like a future. It looks like a. Now the main part of San Tropez is pretty small, but I love just walking around its streets and alleyways. There was this path that walks along the coast, and it was just really nice to explore. All in all, San Tropez is a really beautiful town, and I understand why it's so popular. Now, after is that like an outdoor auditorium or you know theater area? In all, San Tropez is a really beautiful town, and I understand why it's so popular. Now afterwards, we're gonna visit Cassis. Now, I think this was my favorite place we visited in southern France. We stayed several days here. I'm just so glad we did. It's a seaside town with that classic French cheek charm. Now, Cassis is overlooked by Cap Canai, which is home to the highest sea cliffs in all of France with a height of 394 meters. Now, there's a great beach in Cassis, overlooked by a castle. I mean, I just love walking around the harbor, 
looking at all the boats. You can also walk to the lighthouse at the end of the harbor to just relax and enjoy the sounds of the sea. Now, one of the main reasons I wanted to go to Cassis and just southern France in general was to visit the Quelanques. Now, they are these incredible sea coves surrounded by daunting cliffs and crystal clear waters. The is the water in the Mediterranean pretty uh, consistent? Anyone? Someone's got to have been there. Like, does it change with the seasons or because it's kind of blocked off from the Atlantic, except that, you know, straight at Gibraltar, but I mean. And then you got like heat from the Sahara. I just wonder, like, is it a pretty good temperature year round? Or The one I really wanted to go to is Kalank Dambu. Hope I said that right. Now there's several ways to get here. You can either take a boat, kayak, or hike in. Now on our first day there, we rented a little boat from the harbor in Cassis and headed out to the Kalanks. Now the views on the way were just absolutely incredible. Now one downside about the boat is we couldn't land on the beach. You can only drive like halfway through and then it's roped off. But if you do rent a kayak, or a guessing, board, you can take it to the beach, which I definitely recommend if you can handle the long paddle. Now, we went in as far as we could in the Kalung. I'd imagine because it, it would be at danger of being like beached or something. And then turned around after we just kept exploring the coastline, heading west as we relaxed in this other Kalung with some just really unique cliffs and rock formations. It was such a phenomenal area. Now I have so many questions I've had like during every one of just like about like the rock formations. Any geologists in, in the comments? It looks like it looks like those drip sand castles. With some just really unique cliffs and rock formations. It was such a phenomenal area. Now the next day I really wanted to go to the beach in the Kalank Denvu. So we decided to do a hike. Now the hike was about seven kilometers long and it had this one steep descent to get down to the beach. Nothing you can't handle. Now once we reached the beach, I mean it was really an amazing sight. The steep white cliffs coupled with the greens of the pines and blues of the water were just amazing. Now the beach was a decent size with a lot of smooth pebbles. We went for a swim and the water were just so freaking clear. I wanted to find a cliff jump spot, so after swimming down the cove, I found this rock Back about flip. seven meters high and did a few jumps off of it. I mean, there's truly no better feeling than cliff jumping into the Mediterranean. Definitely was one of my favorite places we went and a perfect place to end our time on the Côte d'Azur. While we're still in southern France, we're going to visit the Verdun Gorge. Now, located about a two-hour drive from Nice, the Verdun Gorge is one of the most impressive canyons in all of France. Now, one of my favorite places in the gorge is the view from Pont du Caletas. You get a view of the dramatic cliffs contrasted with the strikingly blue water. Pont du Caletas, you get a See those people going off to found, find like a jump spot? You get a view of the dramatic cliffs contrasted with the strikingly blue water. Now, while you're there, you can rent a boat or paddleboard and explore the gorge. You can also drive on top and get some more phenomenal views. After, let's head over to the castles guys let's be real like the, the, hey i'm not the whole video has been amazing i'm at 1423 how do you beat that how do you beat that you can't After, let's head over to the medieval fortress of Carcassonne. Now, when i imagine medieval europe i don't think there's a i think this one was in his top like European destinations list. Better place that exemplifies it. Better than this fortified Could be city. wrong. Located in southern France, Carcassonne began as a Roman fortified hilltop and was no, given I think to I'm the right. Visigoths in the 5th century who continued to fortify and build the city. Throughout the centuries, Carcassonne Carcassonne began as a Roman fortified hilltop and was given to the Visigoths in the 5th century who continued to fortify given to the Visigoths or, or sorry build the city throughout the centuries Carcassonne proved to be an impregnable fortress as army after army failed to overtake the protected city today the city consists of 53 towers that are protected by its two outer walls it remains look at that entrance today the right there I'd imagine that's like the main way to get in the city consists or at least of 53 one. towers that are protected by its two outer walls. It remains as one of Europe's greatest medieval gems. Afterwards, we're going to head over to the Pyrenees Mountains. Now straddling both France and Spain, the Pyrenees Head over to the Pyrenees Mountains. Now straddling both 
I didn't know they were this tall. Just like like with the Caucasus Mountains, I didn't know we're as tall as they France were. In Spain, the Pyrenees are a mountain range that separates the Iberian Peninsula from the rest of Europe. Now, one of the most impressive places in the Pyrenees is the Cirque du Caverny. It's this dramatic glacial bowl with waterfalls descending its cliffs. Another cool place is Lac de Ayou. It's a nice two-hour hike to the lake and has incredible views of the mountains. After we're going to visit the region of Brittany. Now, located on the northwestern tip of France, Brittany is full of rugged beaches can i just say the riviera i don't know why i guess i do like the riviera out of all of these is probably the least like the the place i'm not as eager to go to as I would love to go. I've never been in the Mediterranean. Maybe I just, ah. And countless lighthouses. I want to see castles. Something that is particularly fascinating about Britain and there's less is its presence of megalithic monuments. There are thousands of stones scattered around the region, ranging from ancient tombs to single standing stones that were arranged by Neolithic Did he get to go there? Over 7,000 years ago. I mean, it's just pretty interesting if you ask me. Now, aside from the ancient- Where's that cave in France? I know you can't go in it. But the cave where they found those super, super old cave drawings. Megaliths. Brittany is home to some stunning coastal towns. One of my favorites is Le Conque. It's an ideal maritime city with a picturesque harbor. One of the highlights of the area is the Kermovan Lighthouse. I mean, just such a beautiful setting. Now for our final destination, we're going to visit. It's just like. It, it is not even a question in my mind, as to what blows my mind the most. And it's this, like it, all the other stuff was beautiful, but look at that, I mean. It, Mont Saint Michel. I have to say this was probably my favorite place I visited in France. This place was just truly magical. Now to get there, it's a four hour drive from Paris. When we arrived, we checked into our Airbnb and made the long walk. We were sort of close, kind of. Our drive from Paris. When we arrived, we checked into our Airbnb and made the long walk to Mont Saint Michel. Now you can't drive directly to the tidal island. Instead, you can park in the parking lots outside and either take a shuttle or walk about. That's even better, actually, because the long walk to Mont Saint Michel. Now you can't. I feel like that's even better because then you won't have like a giant, like a a, a parking lot with a bunch of cars would kind of r ruin the the feel, you know. And so I'm glad it's buses drive directly to the tidal island instead you can park in the parking lots outside and either take a shuttle or walk about four kilometers now i definitely recommend walking if you can as you this is the one place where i, I want to go to a lot of places but this is the one place where i've learned about three youtube videos where i'd want to go to before i die like this is i'm not saying this lightly i need to go to this place i don't know when but I have to. Like, it looks. Approach the island. It's quite the experience. But... I'm not over. I'm not exaggerating. I I'd never said that to a thing. But this is so freaking cool. It just made me think of how the people must have felt throughout the ages as they came here. I mean, just truly something out of a fantasy film. Now, when you reach the island and walk through the gates, you feel like you're walking into a Harry Potter movie. It was as if I was walking down Diagon Alley. Now, we had such a good time walking through the winding alleyways and marveling at all the details. The Abbey is the crowning feature of the island. Its construction began in the 10th century and was added onto throughout the ages. Now, due to its strategic position, and dangerous changing tides, the abbey and the rest of the island remain protected throughout history. Now, around sunset. But the British, you're, they're so close. I, I doubt, though, a, a British ship could get into this area. It looks way too shallow. And even if it, it got high tide and went in, you'd probably get beached before you could get out. That's so cool. When the tide started to come in. I was amazed by how fast the water levels were rising. I mean, I understand now why it was so dangerous for the medieval pilgrims to walk to the island. Now, on our way back, we met up with some sheep in the fields. I mean, truly, it was a special experience and one of my favorite memories from my time in France. Now, the next day, we woke up to see Mont Saint Michel for sunrise. Mm -hmm. 
On our way back, we ran into a herd of sheep storming through the streets on their way to eat some morning grass. I mean, definitely it was the perfect way to end our time at Mont Saint Michel. Well, that is it for my France top 25. I'm barely scratching the surface, so be expecting a part two coming soon. Let me know where your favorite place is in the. I gotta give them a sacrifice to the algorithms comments below. I also start a Spanish channel. If you prefer to watch my videos in Espanol, I did a video on France you might enjoy. Such you a can great find video me on Instagram as... and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan and we will see you later. Photos are phenomenal. Keep up the awesome work. Great work, Ryan. Sacrifice to the algorithm gods. Um, this channel's so good, and oh my freaking god, it's not even close. I feel like I'm disrespecting the other beautiful places, but look at that. All right, I love you guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I don't I hope I didn't pause too much, but my first video of the day here, so that's just an excuse. Uh, see you guys next time. All right, hope you're all doing well. If not, you know, you'll be good soon. Emotions are fickle, guys. Bye, guys.